Hello and welcome everybody. Thanks for joining this week's office hours. I'm here with Amy and Vanessa this week and they lead our design team. Um, I'll get into a little bit more about what they do and their responsibilities are in a second, but I just wanted to give us a few more minutes and let other, one, other people join and then we'll just kind of kick it off from there. So how are you guys doing today? Good, how are you? Good, good. Yeah. Love and life. It's still mm -hmm. warm here. I think I know we love to talk about weather in Canada, but mm -hmm. I'm just loving how warm it is here. Considering <laughs> we're on the West Coast and we're much colder, that is saying a lot. I Too know. cold here. Yeah. I know. I know. I'm not unhappy at all. I uh, really <laughs> like this. Is the stream of the open house available to view? Yeah, Marvin. Um, we're editing the video right now. It's going to be live next week. Um, and then we'll have it up on YouTube and you'll be able to see it there. Yeah, that'll be exciting to see. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be beautiful. Um, we're going to have Ashley, who is the sales rep there, or sorry, our, our director of sales now. Um, she'll be doing a really cool walkthrough of the whole video and talking about Great. the design and, you know, what you two have put into the home and all the other features. So it's going to be a, a really good uh, in-depth walkthrough, Marvin. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we'll just let this go for another minute and then we'll kick it off. Um, some other news, a uh, new website coming out soon. So um, lots of new information is going to go up on the website and there's going to be a bunch of new information for the catalog page. And who knows, maybe there will be some new designs on the catalog page. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> uh, maybe in the new year, maybe that'll be really cool. Um, the walkthrough video will be up soon. And um, what else? What else is happening at Devel these days? Any other things new? Um, Have we changed anything in the manufacturing line recently? Did you see that they made um, that goalpost out of like H Steel? This is like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For the World Cup. Yeah, it was so cool. They even had the little Devel logos inside of the goalpost. No way. Yeah, I know it was shared on social media probably, I think it was like two days ago or something like that. But that was really cool to see. Wow. Yeah. No. That's the same steel that we make the frame from, eh? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, that was fun to see. And I know, I think, I, I think Colin was there to do that. And he's a really big soccer fan. I think Colin designed that goal post on the plane, actually. Oh, really? Is that what he said? Yeah. <laughs> we just threw it together on a whim and they built it. Fun. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's probably better than watching five hours of bad movies. I know. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, hello again. Thanks for joining, everybody. I'm here hosting today with Amy and Vanessa. They beat our design team. Um, and what they uh, bring to the team is a ton of background in interior design. They both have their uh, bachelor's degree in it. And actually, Vanessa has her master's in it. She spent some time in Italy, really honing her skills. And, and what that means is we get these not only really beautiful homes, but we get functional homes. We get homes that flow well. And we get something that is uh, timeless and something that's not just going to go out of style or, or feel like it just doesn't work. Um, so they're going to get into their presentation, their discussion about everything about design and, uh, you know, what inspired them and how we go about it all. So we'll just let them take it away. And then if anyone has any questions, you just pipe up and, um, we'll try to get to it. If it makes sense to answer the questions, then if not, we'll try to hold some questions until the end. So the floor is yours, ladies. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, this is us. Fun fact, this might be the only photo that Amy and I have together over like a decade of friendship. Um, but here we are. <laughs> and we had to take it for work, actually. So Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so before we start talking about our homes, I think we'll just dive into, you know, why Devel Homes are modern. Um, so it's important to understand a little bit about, you know, design's definition of modern. It refers to the mid-century modern movement, um, which actually 
kind of was born in the 1930s, but it didn't gain popularity until around the 50s or the 60s. And you can see in this slide, um, a few of the, you know, um, ideals that the mid-century movement speaks to is the clean lines, um, form follows function, connection with nature, indoor, outdoor living and open living spaces. So these are, um, you know, also seen in a lot of Develle's homes especially the indoor outdoor living the connection with nature those are things we always try to include in our homes so um, modern design really speaks to a devel home and i think there's some i think misconceptions with modern too i think people think modern is like of the modern time um which would be more i guess contemporary but we mm -hmm. like to look at these elements of the of that design because it does lend itself well to modular design in the sense of so we are building these out of different modules. So having those clean lines, simplistic lines, um, also too with having a more streamlined and simple building envelope is good for the efficiency of our home. If we have lots of like jogs or peaks or recesses in, it makes that envelope just a little bit more difficult to um, insulate and have those penetrations and stuff like that. So that's one reason too why we look to that design. Um, and then, yeah, like Amy was saying, having, you know, the into indoor outdoor living, these big windows where we can have lift and slides and um, which are our sliding doors and windows that look out to the views. That's really important to us. And um, yeah, we think our homes are more like a blank canvas for someone to put their own uh, style in. So we don't want to do anything that's a little, that's too trendy. We want you to bring in your furniture and your artwork and your accessories. And that is what really makes the home what it is. That's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a complete newbie about design. What, like what does form follows function mean? Like, is it just like you have a nice open floor plan and like a cool kitchen? So it's basically the idea that a home's not designed purely based on aesthetics. It's designed with functionality in mind. So that is at the forefront of all of our designs is a functional living space. And then with that, the form would follow the function. Mm -hmm. um, so the design isn't necessarily an afterthought, but function is always at the top of mind when we're designing art. Because you think of, you know, if you think of Art Nouveau, Art, art Deco that came beforehand, a lot of things had a lot of like, um, extra frill onto the, you know, the design of chairs or cabinets and stuff like that. And it, in that time when modern design was coming down, it was such a change from that overly decorative things that you're seeing. It's, you know, the thing is, is like, well, before we want to make sure that you can sit in the chair, it's like ergonomic, or you can open the cabinet and it works. Like that was what was more important than like the frilly things that go around it. And it's actually more difficult to make something modern and simple without that decorative detail to like hide imperfections and stuff like that so the skill that's needed to do that kind of work too is elevated as well and like we find that too in our own homes when you do something very simple and very basic it needs to look good and, and be done properly you can't hide behind anything to to make it look nice yeah that's really cool that makes sense thanks yeah no worries um, so we wanted to touch base about the design process, um, more so what you will get into once you've, you know, talking to talk to sales, um, your land has been assessed to see if, if it'll work with um, the design that you want, which is discussions that we've that had in past office hours. So under the assumption that you've gone through that process with Ashley and Sam, and you have a home um, that you want to want to do and you've qualified for budget and land, um, we have an arrangement of standard designs from, you know, an ADU accessory dwelling unit that's one bedroom, one bathroom to, you know, 3,900 square feet, four bed, four and a half bathroom designs. We have an array of different options for you to choose from. Yeah, so like Vanessa said, um, the first step is obviously that getting in touch with sales, PM, doing that lot analysis and choosing the home that's right for your lot and right for your lifestyle. So um, we've pulled a few of our standard designs to show here. We've got many more than these, but 
Um, we have a wide array of floor plans, two-story, single-story homes. And the idea is that you select a floor plan and we try to keep modifications on these floor plans to an absolute minimum. Um, it speeds up, obviously, the efficiency of the manufacturing process. And um, we like to think that we've designed a floor plan with everybody's lifestyle in mind. So um, not wanting to you know, change too much is key for our process. Um, and, all of, sorry. sorry. I was just going to say we have um, just a bit of a layout of what that process looks like, which would start after you sign the design agreement. That's when you would start talking to Amy and myself. Um, and what the first phase looks like is we put the design that you've picked on the site we make sure that we're accessing the views you want to access. Um, we also show some minimal like hardscaping, so a garage, the patio space. If the design doesn't already have an integrated garage into the plan, we'll also show that attached or detached. And then we get you to approve that. And then the second phase is a more expensive package where it's, you know, perspectives in black and white. So you can see different angles of the home. Um, exterior elevations and so you'll see things like your window sizes your door sizes how high they are high off how high off the ground they are um, things like that floor plan you'll get the you know the room sizes the ceiling height you'll get all that information so we, you can approve that as well in between that phase and the third design phase we do have an internal review with the rest of the design team, just to make sure structurally we're not we're not proposing anything that's not going to work for your certain jurisdiction for like snow or earthquakes or anything like that. And then civil as well, if we need to engage, if you have a sloped lot, um, if there's things that we need to engage landscape or civil into, we just want to make sure that the final design that you're signing off on, we're not there's not any surprises when the time comes that we're, oh we need to move this wall or make this door smaller or things like that. So we have that review in between those two design phases. And then in that third design phase, we present to you again, anything that might've changed in the internal review. And then this is also when we do the lookbook calls. So this is when you're collecting all your finishes and fixtures inside and outside of the home. Um, any upgrades that you also want as well, which goes, we talk about in the lookbook. And from there, we have a consolidated package of, you know, your floor plan, your, your site plan, your lookbook, and that gets estimated. And that's what is proposed for the manufacturing agreement. So we're the ones that you work with closely during that whole design process. And um, after that, we kind of hand you over to the rest of the design team to work on the manufacturing. That's so cool. So... I get that we're not trying to do modifications to streamline the process and control costs and all that, but what do you think are some common asked for and like potential modifications we could make to the design? Like, like if I'm, if my bathroom window in, in one of the floor plans is looking at my neighbor's bedroom window, can we move it? Can we like mirror floor plans? How does that, how does that stuff work? Right. So mirroring the floor plan usually isn't an issue because we're not actually changing any of the dimensions, um, you know, anything like that. So if your lot, if the home is situated better, if you mirror the home, then that's totally fine. Um, mm -hmm. The window in the bathroom is a good point. Typically, you know, it wouldn't be an issue to remove a window, um, but changing the sizes of the windows, changing the locations of the windows, that's the type of thing that we're trying to streamline. So, for instance, if you still wanted that light in the bathroom, um, but you wanted a little bit more privacy on that side, we could frost the window. Also, when designing bathrooms, we do keep in mind that people are going to have different lots and, you know, neighbors that could potentially be close. So, um, whenever there's a privacy situation, typically the window's high enough to let light in, but um, you're not really able to see into the window. Got it. So we're not living in like a complete glass box. Yeah, we're not going to put automatically like an eight foot by eight foot, you know, big window, like right in front of your bathtub or something, knowing that that's not going to work in many situations that yeah. there are lots that people have. So I think where we find... Um, customization works the best is when it comes to the lookbook and we will talk about it just in a little bit but I think that's where 
people really make the home their own. We have pre-selected palettes that people can pick from and everything, but people can mix and match. But we've also had someone say, hey, I found this light at a store and I really want that to be over my dining room rather than what something that you selected. And we're happy to say, that's fine. We'll stub out the electrical for you. And that's something that can be installed on site. Things like that. And in the end, I think, yes, floor plan, certain floor plan will work, certain floor plans will work on, on certain lots. But I think where that customization comes in, where someone can really make this home feel like their own are things like that. And also, like we said, we try to make it feel like a blank canvas so you can bring in these unique furniture pieces or artwork and things like that, that really just, it makes it your own home. Things that are easy to switch out to in a few years. Um, mm -hmm. We are really conscious of obviously our environmental footprint and we're trying to design homes that you're not going to have to renovate your kitchen and, you know, 10 to 15 years when the trends change, mm -hmm. um, it's still going to be a cohesive aesthetic with different color schemes, different furniture, different pieces of artwork, those types of things. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We already talked about it a little bit, but the lookbook selections is the point in the process that a lot of people are very excited for. Um, for some clients, it's very overwhelming because there are a lot of finishes to choose from, but Vanessa and I are always here to help clients and walk you through. We've got all the samples in our office, so anytime a selection needs to be made, we're you know vetting those samples and making sure they mesh well together and everything's going to look great when your home is complete. And we have two lines, like this is something that we've adopted quite recently, an essential line and an advanced line. Um, essential line is just more of a cost effective lookbook selection. It's still vetted from a health and wellness perspective. You're not getting products that we don't, we wouldn't put into our own home. It's just simplified and, you know, the cabinetry is a little bit more simplified. Um, the finishes are... For example, you know, American Standard, which is still a reputable plumbing company, and Growy is the one in the advanced line, again, like a good quality European brand. Um, aesthetically, we want them to look the same, no matter if you're in the essential line or the advanced line. For example, here, you know, the American Standard plumbing fixture, it's still a wall-mounted faucet with two handles, the same as the the Duravit, you're just getting a little bit more bang for your buck when you go with the essential line. So that's something that you'll determine in the beginning of the sales process, like what direction you want to go. Um, and then there's also upgrade options in, in both of these two for plumbing fixtures, appliances and stuff like that. So this is just a little sample of what you might see going through the lookbook document itself. So um, we set up a lookbook call. They usually take, they've been taking over an hour you know lately to go through all of these selections you start with exterior finishes of your home um, again like Vanessa said we have um, pre-packaged palettes that we have put together just for clients that might need a little more direction however people do tend to mix and match and that's fine for these interior and exterior finishes um, we walk you through all of your plumbing fixtures, all of your lighting, all of your appliances. And this is the point too where clients start to think about upgrades. For example, if they want to add a fireplace, um, potentially upgrading an appliance package. That's the point when you would look into this type of thing. Cool. Okay. So I have a couple of questions and one of them is going to put you on the spot. Um, mm -hmm. If I wanted to just upgrade a fridge and not all the appliances, is that, is that something I could do? Unfortunately, no. So the way our, our kitchens are designed similar to our homes, we have standard kitchen packages. Um, the millwork is pre-designed in a lot of cases, you know, the millwork's already pre-ordered. We have the boxes, the sizes can't change. So it's either you're getting a upgraded kitchen package that has everything or um, the essential kitchen package. So as soon as you start changing those sizes, for instance, um, your fridge opening might need to get a little bit bigger. That starts affecting all of the millwork. And it's just easier if we package them and, you know, your standard appliance package or your upgrade appliance package. And um, we, we're not trying to tweak the millwork too much. Yeah, the thing is, is say you were to do like a Samsung fridge to a Bosch fridge, they're both 36 inch wide refrigerators like that. We try to keep the same. The thing is every 
manufacturer of appliances, they will require different cutout um, requirements for height. I mean, actually, even sometimes the refrigerators might have to be the same width, but there'll be different heights. And it just causes a ripple effect that potentially something could go wrong if we're just piecemealing appliances. Mm-hmm. The one place that we do allow modification is upgrading. We have an option to upgrade to Miele for appliances. And that's also with washer and dryers. And we do a heat pump dryer. Um, and the Miele heat pump dryer is only like an apartment size dryer, not something that we would ever recommend for like a family of four or something. So we do say you can upgrade everything that's in the kitchen, but if you want to keep the washer and dryer of Samsung or of Whirlpool, that's totally fine. It's, it's going into a different room. It's not affecting like the kitchen millwork itself. So that's something that we've we've allowed just because we want the home to be livable as well. And if you're a, a larger family and you wanted to upgrade your appliances, but you don't want a small washer dryer, you get it. So that's where we're able to have a compromise there. That makes sense. That's very mm-hmm. sensible. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I wouldn't want to do a, a, a lot of laundry in small machines. No, no. Those college days are over. Yeah. Um, so when we're going through the lookbook, and I get that it's all pre-designed and, you know, we're looking at the colors and whatnot. Do mm-hmm. we get a lot of people wanting to like touch and feel samples? Are there ways that we overcome that? How does that conversation usually go? Honestly, typically we have two types of clients. Um, the one client that just kind of says like, you know, this looks great. The rendering looks great. I'll take this and moves on. And then there's Um, The other type of client that does, like you say, they want to look at samples, they want to, you know, make sure that in different lights, they still like the color. And we totally understand that. Um, Mm -hmm. I personally would be that type of client. But a lot of these finishes that we show in the lookbook, they're quite common. Um, Caesar Stone, for example, you can go to basically any countertop manufacturer and have a look, get some samples on your own. If there's ever an instance that we run into where a client's having trouble collecting samples on their own, we'll send them, we'll mail them a sample to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, we're working on getting sample boards complete. Um, it's kind of been on the back burner for a while, but we're always here to accommodate clients if they need to see samples. And depending on where a client may be, there's also visiting the factory, there's samples there, Mm -hmm. Um, being able to, you know, walk through certain like open houses. I think that's a super uh, important thing as well, just to be able not only to see the finishes, but even just to be able to like open and close a door and see how that is and stuff like that. So um, all those different opportunities, we've been just trying to make it as easy as possible Um, But yeah, I think a lot of clients uh, either, like Amy said, the rendering is enough to visualize or they see a photo of a a home that we've already done and said, we like exactly what we see here. We're we're happy to take that palette. We had that a couple of times or like the last, you know, three clients after we posted some photos of a completed home, they're like, we just want this. This looks Mm -hmm. great. We're done. So um, it all depends on, on the client. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Thanks. And so, yeah, lastly is finishing the home. So something that and I think is super important once you're moved into your home is furnishing the home as well. Um, Something that we haven't really advertised as much, but Amy and I are happy to put together furniture packages as well for for home. It's separate from the design agreement. Um, it would be charged like on an hourly rate, depending on how many rooms you'd want furnished as well. But we have relationships with Rove Concepts. They mostly did this house here that's um, in Santa Rosa, Restoration Hardware, um, Crate and Barrel. And we're able to pass on those discounts to you and create a furniture package from these different um, companies, accessories, uh, artwork, things like that, just to bring that design in. Um, you know, we're happy to share Pinterest boards and stuff like that to see the kind of style that you want to have. As we say, like we want our homes to be this blank canvas. So we would like to think that many different styles can work within these, within these homes. And, and so, yeah, we just want that opportunity to kind of complete that, that design and, uh, have something from start to finish where you feel like we've served you from, from that. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. I know once I went to the, the Shelter Glen open house, which are these pictures that you're showing here, mm. how stunning the, the furniture is once you're in the home. And one of the most common pieces of feedback was how much people love the design and the furniture. And they're like, mm -hmm. well, just take this home as it is, you know, <laughs> asking if the furniture comes with it. So I think, I think that really speaks to like, a how you two have designed the homes but also like the furniture packages and like how it changes the the feel and, and the look of it mm -hmm. and it's such a fun thing for us to do as well i mean usually we're you know looking at floor plans or like looking at cabinet drawings and to be able to like, take a step back and you know having fun selecting furniture i mean it's a win for us as well so it's yeah. nice to see just the differences um we've staged three spec homes with Deval now. Um, and just if you look at the differences of each photo, um, a lot of the feedback that we have when we're going through the lookbook is, you know, sometimes people think like there's not enough character. Maybe it looks a bit too sterile. But if you look at these finished photos of these homes, mm -hmm. um, you can really put your personal touch in here with the furniture, the accessories, those types of things. And they look completely different, um, all three of them. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's an interesting, you know, tool for people to look at these photos and, and visualize their own home. Yeah, it's so helpful. I'd love to have open houses every month. I, know. <laughs> I don't know if you guys would though. I mean, maybe we, it would be a little bit uh, difficult. Yeah, once a month might be a little much, but <laughs> we do love to see a home finished and furnished with the accessories. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining the call. Yeah, thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah, that was super helpful. Um, Marvin, you I think you might be the only one in here. Do you have any other questions for us while we're wrapping things up? Um, also, this is going to be recorded. It is recording, so it'll be going up on YouTube shortly, and you'll be able to find it all there. Um, and I guess we'll just keep following along on Instagram. Oh, good news, too, Pinterest. You guys are taking yeah. over Pinterest now too. So there'll be lots of cool photos going up there and seeing all of our other previous homes and stagings and a whole bunch of other stuff, hey? Yeah, yeah we've been working on it on the back end quite a bit, just trying to get those photos out there in the world for people to look at and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's super helpful. So then you discuss a so there was a question from Marvin. Yes, we do. We have a structural engineer in house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Typically, landscape, civil, that kind of engineering, we we um, we contract that out just depending on where um, the project's located. But yes, structural we have in house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you'll also want to have your own land survey done and mm -hmm. soils mm -hmm. reports and topographic stuff and um, yeah, exactly. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I, I'm sure you've joined other sessions too, Marvin, but if you have any questions, just email me, hello at devel.com and, and we can talk more about your project too. Um, so that was really great. That was an efficient, fast presentation, just coming up on 30 minutes. So we'll wrap it up there. And um, if anyone else has any questions in the future, I'll just ping you guys and we'll go from there. Perfect. Oh, great.